that there's going to be a manifestation. I remember uh, going into a home to do evangelism. Walk in, because some people, they're doing, they're, they're involved in Santeria, they're involved in uh, yep. Obia, Voodoo, Voodoo, Witchcraft. Mm -hmm. They're involved in all sorts of demonic activities. Different levels activities. of the occult. Ouija mm -hmm. boards, different levels of the occult. Mm -hmm. And we walk into that home, and let me tell you something, if you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit, fear will grip your heart. But here's the reality, when the power of the Holy Ghost is in you, there is no fear. It does just it just doesn't exist. The blind started moving, things started moving and hovering around us. Okay? And we prayed immediately and everything was still. The blind stopped moving, things stopped, stopped hovering, everything slammed to the floor, literally right there in <laughs> Lord have mercy. Why? Because the power of God is so strong that demons don't even know how to act. That's okay, it. and they know breakthrough is coming. Yes. To that person. That's what that's what causes the restlessness in them. And this is something that we need to understand. Remember when all those spirits that Jesus Christ encountered, the ones that are in My the Bible, God. they identified Christ first. Yep. They I they are the ones that identified Christ. And this is when you're walking under the anointing and the power of God's Holy Spirit. Demons Reckon. will manifest. Yep. They will say something. They, they, because, it, because you're walking with the light, Pastor Absolutely. Raj. And because you're walking with the light. Anywhere the light of Christ or God's holy presence hits, whatever is in the darkness has to show itself. Absolutely. It has to show it. And this is biblical. This is biblical references that we're making. It has to show itself. What happens when, when the light comes on with when, when, when they're roaches? They, they start tripping. They're like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Yep. Apostle Paul, there was a woman who was tormenting him. Oh, the great man of God, the mighty man of God. Jesus. Why? There was a manifestation taking place in that woman mm -hmm. to deter him. And immediately he rebuked the spirit out of him, the demonic spirit out of him. Of woman. course. And but it showed all also. the gain that she gained her master was mm -hmm. lost. Was lost. But it shows also how when we are doing the will of God, when we're in the will of God, going about God's business, how distractions could easily come. Because Apostle Paul could have easily gotten distracted by this woman singing praises. Yep. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And some of us head. on our journey, these things, you know, the recognition from people get can get to your head so that's one pride, of the ways pride kicks, pride kicks in that's one of the things that as evangelists or anyone called to the evangelism in this especially in the streets you got to be very very careful asking god at all times to guard your heart because that pride will kick in especially if you pray for someone pastor raj and that mm -hmm. person get their breakthrough yep. and they find you oh my gosh this woman is a woman of god uh you know the one of the things that I learned very early in my walk with Christ, I struggled with pride. My deliverance from a spirit of pride took years. In, if, if, I, if I am to be 100%. Years. Because pride is not something that gets built up in you overnight. It's something that take, it, it started from you. Mine started from I was a child. Okay? Because it was something, it was just a demonic curse. I inherited from my both my parents and it was a struggle throughout my child and it built up so you're not gonna come to Christ at 35 and then poof all the demonic oppression that you're under for probably the 35 or the 32 or the go 31 away. years go away no no it is some of it some of them take time pride is one such demonic entity that takes time and it really takes a power and the working of God's Holy Spirit to rid you of that one thing the Holy Spirit cautioned me of when I started to go out and do um, evangelism or any sort of ministerial work, whether he, God had me just giving people advice, talking to people, sharing my experiences, sharing my testimonies with people, and, and giving people, providing a safe place for them to share their testimony. He said, Sidoni, whenever people start to congratulate you, hmm. he said, I want you to shut that down and just tell them, don't even tell me thanks and it, it was a hard thing because back you then hear, I, wa I want to hear. hear I wanted to hear oh thank you I, because, because it job. makes you feel like you've done something the Holy Spirit said no God said no absolutely not tell him to pray for you 
yep. that you may continue to do this work. And I said, wow, okay, God, wow. I said, I said God, this is it's a tall order. I said, but I said, I said, God, I'm committed to being obedient to you. And so, and so everywhere I go, and, and the Lord used me in any capacity, and they start to God come. God be the glory. God be the glory. Oh my God. No, no, no. Don't even tell me. You know, just pray for me. Pray for me that, that the Lord will continue to use me like yes. this. Yes. And it keeps me humble, sir. Absolutely. Because you don't want pride to rise up. Because mm. now then God's going to resist you. God my resists God. the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So now then God can't use us the way he desires to use us if I'm, if I'm, if I'm walking in um, pride. So now, one song that has helped me is Andre Crouch's song. song that he wrote. Uh, and one part in, in the verse, he says, if I should gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. Mm. Andre Crouch Gosh. was like the Kirk Franklin of his time of in his the time. 70s. Okay? Yeah. Matter of fact, he probably made more money because the way the whole system was, was set up. But anyway, that's a whole other subject. <laughs> but here the reality is, anytime God uses us, we got to say, Lord, it is for your glory. It is of for it. your honor. Yeah. And it's not about yeah. me. It's about you. And that helps to shut it down for me. Yes. It keeps Shut you it humble. Yes. Because we cannot do the work of God. Look at Jesus Christ. Oh uh, my God. What humility. What? What humility. His kingship, his lordship, and he left heaven to come to earth. Oh my for gosh. Humanity. To endure some of the, the things cross. that he endured. Yep. To, 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 to not have a to not have a, a stable set place where you can call your home. Where after you've gone out and you've you've healed thousands of people, you barely have a decent place to go and sleep and that's when you're cool. done. Yeah. Like 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 what? Like like you, you don't even have you know a chef traveling with mm -hmm. to say okay you know Jesus you know it's two o'clock to have a snack tell everybody do. like you don't. Like he's out there ministering for hours and hours and hours, days upon days, without. I, like, like, like these are the things that I look at because I, I, one of the things that I, I'm glad that God gives me the opportunity to do is to understand that while Jesus Christ was here in flesh form, he was fully God yet fully man. Yes. And some of us forget to appreciate Jesus Christ in his fully man form. Meaning he must have felt hunger. Yep. Meaning he must have felt hurt. He and must have emotions. felt pain. He must have had emotions. He just wept. Oh, God. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so, and so, when I look at how humble Jesus Christ had to be, but the more humble he was is the more of God's power that he got to exhibit. And it's, I feel like it's the same with us. God cannot move when we're like full of pride. Absolutely. We're, that's where we come. We get the resistance from God. Because he has to resist us. Because his power cannot, it cannot, it, it, it's, it's like it, it, it's a deterrent to the, the show of his power. My God. And when, after the same, when you are an evangelist, there's only one truth. There's Jesus' truth. Simple. That's it. There's no... My opinion. Uh, Wesley's truth, that person's truth, mm -mm. that person's mm -mm. truth. Look, if whoever is telling you about a person's truth and it does not align with Jesus' truth, then it's not truth at all. Absolutely not. Jesus said, "My father, me and my father, we are one. Mm. Yep. There's not your truth, my truth. There's mm. one yeah. truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So now get out of that foolishness. You know, it just, it's a distraction, it, though. It is a distraction to stop us from what? Evangelizing the world. And we get up now into what? Debates. Yeah. Because what? This is your side in Christianity, that side in Christianity, that side in Christianity. And what happens now? We're debating one another instead of doing what, truth, what My Jesus God. said. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. That's Matthew 28. So now, we now oh ignore God. the Great Commission and in debates. Trying to prove. About what Jesus has clearly stated what he so needs you to do. The word of God is almost self-explanatory. Simple. Jesus is very clear, especially when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. There's a greater level of revelation that happens yes. and takes place yes, that opens your eyes to the truth of God's word. And 
let me tell you, Jesus is the way. The he the is. Life. And and so and so while you're on your journey um to evangelize the world, don't get caught up in silly, stupid doctrines of demons. Yes. Or, or doctrines of men. Arguments and debate. Even Arguments Apostle and Paul debates. Said, get, stay out debates. of the arguments. Don't waste. It's a waste of time and it is a distraction. No matter how fulfilled you think or satisfied you think you may feel, you say, like, oh, well, I won this for Christ. No, you don't need to win nothing for Christ. Go out there and tell people that unless they repent, turn from their wicked ways, accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they are going to go to hell. They, are, they will have no lot in our part. And on the day of judgment, God is going. Jesus Christ is going to say, Depart from me, I know you not, you worker of iniquity. That is the plain, simple, raw, fact, truth of God's word. So this, this all this stuff, God's Holy Spirit will bring about revelation in their hearts. So don't think that you, you, you got to go out and evangelize somebody, they're going to change. Like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm right here. No, no. Don't waste your time on the debates. No. You know, we look at scripture where Apostle Paul, they were, I think it was Apostle Paul, they were, they were arguing. He said, look, I plant <laughs> a, a, a Apollos, Apollos he waters. waters. <laughs> but check it out. I can plant all I want. A policy can water all he wants. But unless God brings the increase, there ain't no nothing increase. Gonna happen. Simple. So he just end the argument right there about Apollos ministry, Paul's ministry. Who's better than who? No. I plant Apollos water, God brings the increase. Why? We are one. We are, in, we are not in debate, we're not arguing and fighting each other, and losing focus, as you said, being distracted Absolutely. from the true assignment that God has given us. But it's so, str it's, it's so strange, sir, that Christ would use the analogy of the body. We are one body. You never see your right hand fighting with your left hand. Never. You never see your left foot trying to trip the right foot, telling the right foot, you're, I'm better than you. <laughs> you never see your right eye trying to stick out the left eye saying, I'm better than you. The body works and functions in a coordinated effort to accomplish one goal. If I'm going to go across the street, all my limbs include and as well as my all my muscles all my organ my my, my entire organic structure is going to work systematically all my systems work all my neurological functions work and take me across the street yes. that is the goal if i'm going to eat my fingers my hands my brain my tongue my esophagus my stomach work together collectively so i can eat one goal at a time so the hand ain't got no time fighting with the foot. The foot ain't got no time fighting with the hand. Mm -hmm. We're all one body. And that's why Christ mentioned, Apostle Paul reiterated it, that we're one body. We're called to be one body. Yes. Focused on one central truth. Simple. Simple as that. We are on an assignment. And we cannot, we have to understand that we are here on purpose. We are here on wow. purpose. The reality is, just lost a friend, uh, uh, last week mm. and uh, they had his funeral but here's the reality not only him anyone who has gone on before wow. they were here for they were here for a purpose we are here for a purpose mm -hmm. we're not just here just to make a lot of money make really a lot of crypto it. yeah bitcoin not just to merely own a mm. lot of land and properties and and riches and gold hey that may come it may come it may not come right we don't mind the riches hey, we don't mind absolutely the blessings, not right but we're here for a greater purpose yes. than that and that purpose is an assignment that God has given to us to what? Proclamate the gospel of Jesus Christ yes. in your big or little way. It doesn't matter what size it is. It doesn't matter how big, the, big or small the assignment is. Are you staying true to your assignment? Yes. Am I staying true? Are we staying true to our purpose? Why we are here? Why we are literally inhaling wow. and exhaling? The Bible says that as soon as they remove the priestly robe, from Aaron, which represents his assignment, he died. End of it. He died. Wow. So we see a lot of people, they've gone on. <laughs> as soon as their assignment is over, they're gone. 
they're like, oh, gee. And then you know, I see a lot of people, they, their assignment is over and they live a couple years, whatever, you know, yeah. with the grandkids, kids, whatever. But then God says, look, I, I'm ready to take I'm you. ready. So you don't lose focus. Wow. It, it, so you don't lose your, so you don't want, <laughs> it's not about this and that. Look, I'm just, that's, that doesn't, I'm not saying that's going to happen to you or, or to anyone. No, yeah. I'm just saying that our purpose is so important. And we cannot ignore. As a matter of fact, the reason why we are anointed is because of the purpose, because of the assignment. Absolutely. You reject your purpose of evangelism. That's what we're talking about. You literally, you literally are rejecting yep. your, the anointing yep. of God. Because this is why I place you here. You don't want to do it. You don't need my anointing. What do you need my anointing to do? To destroy what yoke? <laughs> but then, sir, you, you, here you touched on a very important note. It is not just the evangelist that is called to evangelize. If you meet an apostle and that apostle with his big title and big robe feels like he's above getting in them streets and talking to that one soul and That's leading garbage. that soul to Christ. He's confused. Or he's confused, confused or she's confused That's and true. they're not following through with the godly mandate placed on every single person's life Absolutely. the job or the responsibility of evangelism is not just on the named evangelist every apostle every pastor every prophet every teacher, prophet, teacher every every person must proclamate the gospel. must tell someone that there is a god who saved and his son is jesus christ 